the document, the process, and, and how we organize comments. Uh, you know, I, I think it would be good to have it sort of a give and take. I, I don't want to talk too much, but you know, I, I think we should sort of go over uh, two things. One, you know, the content of this this document a little bit. I mean, clearly we've, we've got more than a thousand pages. We probably have another three, four hundred to come uh, with with this uh, socioeconomic study. Um, talk about how to approach it, but also, um, you know, what does it mean to produce substantive comments? And how do we uh, generate the volume of comments? I, I have to admit, I, I've been without a computer for two weeks. I, I did this at a Staples uh, uh, yesterday. I tried. To, I, I bought a computer and convinced them to let me use one while I bang this out. So I apologize um, if it's a little crude. But I, um, I, I realized we have a much more sophisticated audience than than I, I probably laid it out. So I think we can we can s skip over some of the more sort of basic you know, condescending points, I suppose, you know, on, on how to produce comments. But I, I just want to at least begin by, by talking about, um, you know, how as, as organizations we produce comments and as individuals uh, we, we work on comments. Just the, the basic timeline, last Wednesday uh, the DEC was supposed to produce this last part of the study. We've had this horrific storm event. Uh, many of us have been impacted by it. The DC is certainly impacted by it. Uh, they, their commissioners and deputy commissioners are out surveying storm damage. I don't think they could get the press wherewithal to release the document. We anticipate maybe Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, we will see you know the, the last installment. Uh, it's up in the air whether we will have a 60-day public comment period or we'll get more. I know there's a movement uh, we're, we're all participating in on Tuesday to, to call for a 180-day public comment period. This has been ongoing. There have been rolling calls. It would be good on Tuesday, uh, I think it's from, from uh, 12 to 4, to barrage the, uh, the DEC and the governor's office with calls for a 180-day public comment period. Um, I won't belabor that, but, but um, you know that, that's where we are. So we really have perhaps until Halloween or at least the first week, you know, in November to get all this done. Um, just, just to look at how the DEC has been gauging comments. I mean, clearly, you know, for the scoping, we had 3,000 comments in 2008. In 2009, we got 13, uh, 13 more than 13,000 comments. The, uh, the DRBC got 50,000 comments the year after that. So I think we really can, can target this, I, I would like to see this movement uh, get to 100,000 comments. Um, and we, you know, there, there, there's many ways of, of going about doing that, and we, we kind of have to weigh what, what are important comments. Uh, the DEC broke it down in, in the, the draft, um, and uh, I think that's on page 1-7, uh, uh, but, and I, you know, I, I know it's, some people have computers and have access to this. We have a couple copies around here, bear with me. I think we should crack into the document as we talk. But basically, they broke it down like this. About, you know, they, they count 9,000 plus comments were, were web forms, but they counted them. Uh, and then the, they, they claim 11 petitions with 30,000 comments. They don't count every signature as a comment. So I think the, 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 the takeaway we can get from this is no petitions. Um, I think what's more effective, I think tabling is very effective, have, the, have an individual sort of web form type thing that hits on some of the most important common themes. If you're going to be tabling, if you're going to be going to events uh, where you would be petitioning and get individual signatures on an individual piece of paper on, on a form letter that you can get in. I know that a lot of websites have been stressing form letters don't count or they're not as important. They're not as important to everyone in this room who are considering doing individual substantive comments. But for organizations like mine, where I can reach 50,000 people at a time, large organizations like the Working Families Party, the Teachers Union, other unions that I think we can get to weigh in, where they're reaching millions of people, um, I think the potential is really great. We have to have those web forms. So in whatever capacity you can generate mass comments, even if they're the same comments, I think that that's important. Um, and so we, we kind of have to, well, there's a spectrum. The truly substantive, unique comments 
that are going to slow down this process because the DEC, the regulators, are going to have to read each individual comment. So we have organizations like NRDC, I'm hoping the National Sierra Club, others, that are going to be hiring experts that are really going to be hammering away at, at some of the, the, the more you know, unfortunate uh, uh, aspects and deficiencies of the document. And then we're going to have the tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands, of web forms that will bolster the numbers. So both are important. So we have to kind of figure out how to generate that. I see this group as somewhere in the middle, where I think all of you, I expect all of you, to at least each generate uh, you know, substantive comments as, as small grassroots organizations. You know, do your part in pushing the envelope in unique comments, perhaps rooted in your communities, things that the DC wouldn't have considered or based on who you are as a professional. Larissa, you're, you're a brilliant example in, in, in terms of, of being a health professional and driving the bus on getting the health community uh, to be engaged. And I, I would ask all of you to look into your own background and expertise and see how you can answer that. Um, and I think we have to try imaginative approaches. I, I think it was mentioned on a, a call. I've thought a lot about it. I'm trying to get my members to do it. Get a note from your doctor. You know. Uh, I, I think we could take, you know, your letter and modify it so that, you know, everyone uh, within, say, you know, our, our thousands activist network, take it to your, your primary care physician and say, will you endorse this? Will you sign this? You know, go in for your, your, your checkup, come out with this signature, turn it in. Um, I think that that's, that's incredibly important. Hunter, hunting and fishing groups, you can get an extension in the public comment period. We're going to have a lot of sort of pancake suppers before you go out and hunt. You know, if anyone has an in to a fisher group or into a hunting group, you know, get a, get a photocopier in there. Have them photocopy their hunting license next to a picture with deer with cancers on it, a decimated trout stream. Have them write a quick, simple note. You know, I'm opposed to fracking. I don't think it's worth, you know, the, the money and the time and the love I, I, I put into the wilderness resources. You know, think outside the box in terms of community groups that can organize around this. So we're going to Trout Unlimited to hopefully do some things like that, but, but it can grow from there. Church groups as well. See what kind of letter you can get into a church bulletin to encourage people. You know, even if it's a stock form letter that they can sign, rip out of the church bulletin and send in, or put in a box outside the church. I think those kinds of things, maybe they're small, maybe it's a dozen letters at a time, but, but can work out. And I know that there's, there's going to be several wiki sites um, that are starting up. I, I, you know, I put one down that, that you know, I've been contributing to, but there'll, there'll be others that will be a resource for the public to link to, to look at tons of comments. Yeah. Who should these be addressed to? All right, so I, I put on the sheet, if you didn't get my crew notes, um, I don't have an official email address, an official repository for the DEC yet. I would hold off on sending official comments yet, we will try in mass to, to get out to every group once the public comment period is announced. Uh, you know, who, who uh, what is the exact email uh, and, and hard copy uh, address to send things to. Hard copy is important, email is important. I would do, yes. you know, do that and, and send it not only to the DEC, but to the governor, to the attorney general, to the health department, and to your individual state senator and assembly person. Um, so, yeah. Well, <clears throat> for the DEC itself, does it make any sense for us to think of trying to hold our comments till the end of the public comment period and not giving them a head start on processing comments and bury them with comments towards the end of whatever, the 60, 90 days, whatever it ends up being? Yeah, you know that 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 was that was certainly my recommendation uh, a month ago, and I'm I'm maybe rethinking that. I mean, certainly submission is one one thing. Yeah, I think it would be better as organizations to hold off our comments, and, and clearly we'd want to do that anyway because we're probably going to be working within 60 days. We're probably going to be working to the last minute. But I don't, you know, the DEC clearly can go on on these wiki sites. They can go on our websites. I think we have to front load the process though, and get a lot of our substantive comments out on the internet, out available to the public, so that they themselves can feel empowered uh, to, to write comments, to read what other organizations are saying, and adopt that into their own comments. I think, so there's a balance there. I don't think we should, we should submit our comments early, but we should get our analysis of the document out.